you know, they, they, they're long and athletic at every position. Uh, outside of their point guard, uh, their, their height, their wingspan, their athleticism is NBA caliber. You know, you, t you start with their two guard, Stanley Johnson. He's 6'7", 245 pounds. Um, that's enormous. Uh, that's enormous in the NBA level. So it's really going to start, like Matt said, with uh, our ability or inability to be physical, to keep them off the glass, to be able to protect the lane. Uh, it's easier said than done. In Ari Arizona's three losses, and they've only had three on the year. Uh, they were out-rebounded twice, and, and the other one was pretty close to a wash. In all of their other victories, uh, the rebounding margin wasn't even close. So that's, that's where it's going to start, first and foremost. What kind of things did you learn from Sean just about coaching and about approaching the job of being a coach? Um, how to be very, very organized, be very detailed. Um, you know, every coach in this profession is a hard worker, or they wouldn't get to the point uh, where they are. But uh, Sean had a systematic approach with everything that he did whether it was recruiting, whether it was organizing a practice, whether it was dealing with players, um, preseason workouts, in-season practice, you name it, there was a system to what we did. And the longer you were around, the longer the system became second nature, whether you were a coach, whether you were a player. And I think that allowed our players to, to really get better during their time because you know, they were going from English one to English two to English three. And by the time they were seniors, they could teach the freshmen. Um, regenerative learning or regenerative leadership, as Tony Dungy calls it. And to me, that's what uh, Sean Miller is the best at in the country. You mentioned after the game when you asked about Sean, his leadership and the type of defender. Can you give us maybe a little what you learned from Sean Miller in his philosophy and his job about being a good leader? Well, I think, I think what I just uh, yeah. described as far as uh, organizing um, and running a program and having a systematic approach, I also think Sean is is really, really good at developing relationships with his players uh, on and off the floor so that they know uh, that he cares about their progress, their development, who they become as people as they walk out the door. And really, uh, I've been very fortunate because Sean's not the only person I've been around when it comes to that, whether it's Coach Gillen, who I played for, whether it was Skip Prosser, who I played for and worked for. Um, you know, all the coaches I've been fortunate enough to be around have had that type of mentality, and Sean's no different in that respect. You said it in the play. Was there any bit that was Sean to go against the stream, or go against the guys with more relationships? Well, the part that's fun is, you know, we're playing for big stakes. You know, to be one of 16 teams in the country that's left standing, um, that's not easy, easy to do. But, you know, as far as the personal experience of Sean's on the sideline and I'm on the sideline, there is nothing – uh, that I enjoy about that experience because one of us is going to be devastated and one of us is going to move on. We'll be happy for the other, but, um, you know, the lead up and all that stuff, it really um, isn't fun. You know, it's going to be great to see his family. I'm sure our kids have all grown several inches since the last time we saw one another, and that part of it's going to be really cool, but that's for the wives and the kids, not for Sean and myself. Sean doesn't he, – he tends not to go to the Final Four. Um, and, you know, I always take my family, you know, and, and, and walk around Brackettville and, and let them go on the slides and shoot baskets and stuff. But Sean becomes a hermit crab when the season's over. And so uh, I don't think we've seen each other, um, you know, out, outside of the season. I know my kids haven't. Yeah, I'm pretty cool, and you know he he's and he's not. Yeah, basketball is a universal language, and I had the utmost respect for Sean, and uh, he taught me so so much, and he, and he allowed me to have responsibility on the basketball floor, and so that's that's where our connection um, was really forged. You know, when we win a big game, and I'd say, hey, let's go out to you know let's go out to eat or whatever, and uh, I think. He did it one time at Willie's Sports Bar in Kenwood when it was open. And that was early in our coaching career together. And that was the first and only time I ever saw him go out after a game. And so uh, I'm the complete opposite. I celebrate like there's never going to be another win. You and Austin Miller during the scrimmage, do you remember the matchup? And is there anything you could share from that? We texted last night. And, um, you know, it was just a congratulatory text. And, 
you know, looking forward, as he said in his text, looking forward to seeing the real C-Mac and your kids this weekend. So he's talking about Christy. Um, he'd care less about seeing me. Well, it's reality. Um, you know, it's reality. I mean, Arizona is one of the true blue bloods in, uh, in college basketball, and we recognize that. I mean, we're not dumb. Um, they should be favored. They have a terrific team. You know, the, the challenge is we don't have to be, be uh, better than Arizona every single uh, game of the year. We have to be better than them on Thursday night for 40 minutes. And our kids are excited about that challenge. And trust me when I tell you it is a challenge. But um, we don't look at ourselves, like Matt said, as a little engine that could. We have a really good basketball team. Um, they have an excellent basketball team. And we have to battle and do our best to win the game.